Dear brothers and sisters in the Lord, I invite you to embark on a journey of profound discovery as we delve into the remarkable revelations bestowed upon the mystic Maria Sima. As Christians, we embrace the three churches within the church, the triumphant in heaven, the militant on earth, and the suffering in purgatory. Sadly, the holy souls in purgatory are often neglected. However, through Maria Sima, these souls have shared insightful revelations that can alleviate suffering both in our earthly lives and beyond. What are these crucial mistakes that can lead Christians to eternal damnation? And what are the errors that must be avoided during Mass? Join us as we explore the three mistakes revealed by the poor souls from purgatory that should be avoided at all costs during Mass today. When Maria Sima was asked in an interview, does Mary, the mother of Jesus, really appear? You mentioned Medjugorje on several occasions. Can you tell me a little bit about that now? She replied in a compassionate tone. Oh, yes, she really appears. And it is today in Medjugorje that she appears every day to a group of young children. I went three times, but I did not need to go there to find out whether it was true or not. Shortly after the apparitions began, in June 1981, I asked a poor soul from Purgatory and told me they were true. You know, with Medjugorje, there is only one great danger, and it is that the world does not take it into account. To better comprehend the astounding revelations shared by Maria Sima from the poor souls from Purgatory, it is important to gain a clear understanding of the role of mystics in the Church. The mystics in the Church have long been revered as individuals who have experienced profound encounters with the Divine. These men and women have delved into the depths of spirituality, seeking a direct and intimate union with God. Their journeys have left a mark on the Church, providing a powerful testament to the richness and diversity of the human experience of faith. In the Gospel of Matthew, the Bible says, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. This verse suggests that those who cultivate purity of heart can attain a direct vision of the divine. Mystics embody this pursuit of purity, striving to purify their hearts from worldly distractions and attachments in order to encounter God more fully. In the words of St. Paul, the delicate balance between embracing prophecy and exercising discernment is highlighted. Paul urges not to quench the Spirit, emphasizing the importance of remaining open to divine revelations. Yet at the same time, he advises caution and to test everything, holding on to only what is truly good and authentic. Obedience to the teachings and authority of the Church has always been a critical criterion for discerning the legitimacy of mystics and visionaries, as well as their alleged private revelations. It is through this obedience that the Church assesses the authenticity of such experiences. A true mystic or visionary will always demonstrate obedience. By adopting this principle, we can be assured that the alleged revelations and messages from a mystic or seer are in line with the divine will. Disobedience towards the local bishop or religious superiors raises doubts about the authenticity of claimed revelations. Since it is through the unity and guidance of the Church's established authority that the graces of God flow, the Church recognizes that God's divine plan is inherently intertwined with His established authority within the Church. It is in this union that the faithful can find reassurance, knowing that mystical experiences and private revelations approved by the Church are in harmony with God's will. The impact of mystics within the Church cannot be overstated. Through their writings, teachings, and personal examples, they have inspired countless believers to deepen their spiritual lives. Mystics often emphasize the importance of prayer, contemplation, and detachment from worldly desires. One such mystic whose insights offer guidance to those seeking a deeper relationship with God was Maria Sima, an Austrian mystic. She became renowned for her experiences with the souls in purgatory, and her wisdom was highly sought after. Interestingly, 
Her encounters with the poor souls led her to unveil three crucial mistakes to avoid during Mass. But what are these mistakes, and what are their implications for our spiritual journey? Before we begin, allow me to introduce you to Maria Sima. Maria Sima, a remarkable soul, was born on February 2, 1915, in the humble village of Sontag, Austria. Raised in a family of devout Catholic farmers, Maria's parents instilled in her a profound faith in God, despite their modest means. At the tender age of seven, Maria felt a strong calling to serve others, either through religious life as a nun or as a lay missionary. She shared this aspiration with her mother, who responded with a mother's wisdom saying, we shall see when you reach the age of 20. However, Maria firmly declared, it is firm inside of me. Either I will enter the convent or I will work somewhere else in the world where I can be of help to others. But at the age of eight, Maria fell gravely ill with pleurisy and pneumonia, which left her health compromised for many years. Nevertheless, her calling to serve God and others continued to grow throughout her teenage years. Eventually, at 17, Maria received permission from her parents and religious superiors to enter the Sacred Heart of Jesus convent in Hall, Austria. Unfortunately, after a short time, the mother's superior informed her that her frailty would prevent her from meeting the physical demands of religious life in their particular convent, resulting in her departure. When did she start receiving visions of souls suffering in purgatory? In the year 1940, when Maria was 25 years old, a profound spiritual encounter occurred that would shape the course of her life. It marked the beginning of her remarkable journey as an intermediary between the living and the souls suffering in purgatory. One fateful night, as she lay in her bedroom, a vision unfolded before her. A restless soul, a holy soul from purgatory, appeared at the foot of her bed. Startled, Maria called out to him, seeking to understand his presence. However, no words were exchanged. She attempted to reach out and touch him, but he vanished. Yet when she returned to her bed, he reappeared, resuming his restless pacing. Maria wondered why she could see him but not communicate or make physical contact. Cautiously observing him, she hoped he would not come near her and pondered the significance of the encounter. Eager to seek guidance, Maria promptly shared the experience with her parish priest, Father Alphonse Matt. Father Matt suggested that the apparition might be a poor soul from purgatory and advised Maria on how to respond if such an event were to happen again. He instructed her to ask, What is it that you need from me? instead of inquiring about the soul's identity. True to Father Matt's counsel, the restless soul reappeared the following night, continuing his pacing. This time, Maria courageously followed the priest's advice and asked, What is it that you need from me? To her astonishment, the soul halted, turned towards her and requested, Please have three holy masses said for my intentions, and then I will be delivered. With those words, he vanished. Maria realized that he was indeed a suffering soul in need of assistance. Driven by compassion, Maria immediately sought to fulfill the soul's request. She arranged for three holy masses to be offered for his intentions. Deeply moved by this experience, she shared the encounter with Father Matt, who encouraged her to continue helping the souls that might approach her. As time went on, more souls from purgatory sought Maria's assistance. What began as a few souls per year gradually grew into a significant number. Now let's dive into the big question everyone is waiting for. What mistakes did the poor souls from purgatory reveal to Maria Sima that should be avoided at Mass? Maria Sima, blessed with insights from the holy souls in purgatory, shared profound revelations. They emphasized the crucial importance of approaching Mass with reverence, urging against distractions and irreverent behavior. According to Maria Sima, the holy souls from Purgatory have revealed the following to her. 
that priests and nuns should always wear their habits, clerics, in as much as possible. The holy souls from purgatory said that extraordinary Eucharistic ministers should be used very rarely, that is, only when it is absolutely necessary, that priests and deacons should make every effort to distribute communion to the faithful, even though it takes longer to do so, and that receiving holy communion in the hand should be avoided as much as possible. They advise that holding hands during the Lord's Prayer and that the sign of peace after the Eucharistic prayer should be avoided as much as it is possible, since both of these are a distraction from Jesus who is present upon the altar, and that we should be concentrating upon Jesus alone during this important time of the Mass. The souls from Purgatory said that outside of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Saint Joseph is one of the greatest saints who advocates for the souls in Purgatory. The angels, especially St. Michael the Archangel, and also the poor soul's own guardian angels, are also very powerful in helping to obtain mercy and pleading for their cause before God. Also very important is any saint that the person might have had a devotion to during one's lifetime. Maria also pointed out that the patron saint of the poor souls in Purgatory is St. Nicholas of Tolentino. The Holy Souls have also revealed to Maria that it is on Christmas Day that most souls are released from Purgatory, and then also on Good Friday, Ascension Day, All Souls Day, and the Feast of the Assumption. Maria Sima's words provide excellent food for thought on our Christian journey. Let us know your thoughts in the comments, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel to become part of our faith and prayer community. God bless you.